Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Harland Highway Podcast. And before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for tuning in. It's, uh, it's coming out of the gate here, the new podcast, and we're doing great. And wanted to thank all of you for jumping on board and watching. And uh, while we're at it, if you can just subscribe, there's a little button over here on the side or there might be one down below that says subscribe. And if you can subscribe to the podcast right now, uh, that would be a huge help. And also tell your friends about the Harland Highway podcast. And one last thing before we get going, I'm, uh, I'm featured on a great new digital platform. It's called Cameo, cameo.com. And how it works is you go to Cameo and you request my name and on Cameo, I can shoot a personal video for you or a loved one or for someone who's a fan. Uh, and basically, I can go on uh, the platform and wish you a happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy retirement, happy engagement, uh, or just uh, say something silly and fun to cheer up you or a friend. Uh, it's a really fun platform. And uh, what you do is you pay a small fee on Cameo. And then they let me know, and you kind of write down what you want me to say, and, uh, and we go from there, and then I record it, and I send it to you, your very own personal uh, video recording for whatever event or occasion or just for the hell of it. So uh, check it out, cameo.com, and uh, maybe I can make a uh, private little video just for you. No naughty stuff. Uh, so that's it. Don't forget, subscribe, Cameo, and uh, we got a great show for you today. So let's go. Let's have some fun here on the Harlan Highway. You're riding down the Harlan Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harlan Highway show. Harlan Williams. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You are here. On the Harland Highway, the only place you want to be. And a uh, very special guest today. Mystery guest, gal pal guest. Uh, beautiful woman, beautiful lady, beautiful girl. Just uh, represents all of female onity. <laughs> that's even a word. Is that a <laughs> word? I mean, it, it is now. It is female now. onity. Female onity. You represent. If there was a Mount Rushmore of female onity, it would just be four heads of you. Oh, there'd I be, thought you were gonna say like me and no. then two other. <laughs> no, no, there'd be no Cindy Crawford. There'd be Very, no Heidi Klum. It'd okay. just be four okay. heads of you, CJ right. Sparks. I mean, that's a good compliment to kick it that's off. An incredible compliment. I can't get my. I can't get my drink open. Oh my god! Oh wait, no, I figured it out. Figured Speaking it out. of drinks, yeah. okay, we got this. This is what we got to talk about right out of the gate because <laughs> I asked CJ. I said, "Do you want me to get you anything to drink when you when you come up and do the Harland Highway podcast?" Mm -hmm. And you were like, "Yeah, get me." And what's it called? Kombucha. Kombucha. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was a Lion King character. What? No. Like I thought kombucha was like one of the little buddies that that. <laughs> Tamba or wing mom or well, I, I don't know. Well, you know what I mean. Tamba or Tampax, wing you tampon. Saw, you, what? You saw the Lion King once. I never that. saw it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and it shows. But do, isn't that that sound like a lot? If I go to the Lion King play, you know there's going to be a character named Sa what's it Kombucha? called? Kombucha. Kombucha. I mean, okay. Well, there there might be now. Um, the whole kombucha thing. Yeah. It's such an LA thing. Yeah. I'm so disturbed that you've never heard of kombucha. I know. I've, I've never heard of it. It's a brand new word in my vocabulary. Please tell me what the hell it is because it looks like a bottle of cough syrup. <laughs> it does. I know. Especially this brand. I love it. It looks very yeah. timey. It is. So I'm just going to read the label oh, here. Oh, God. It is a bubbly probiotic tea for a happy gut. I think that's like the best entrance any type of kombucha can ever get and it makes you like it's healthy i drink it instead of wine because i'm sober yeah so like whenever anybody is like oh wants a fancy drink i yeah. ask for kombucha because i didn't know if you're gonna like ask me if i wanted like alcohol or something yeah yeah although kombucha sounds like a like a yeah. booze it can be they have some like at whole foods 
they have some that's like a boozy kombucha. And then if you let it, okay. So the whole thing about kombucha and why it makes your health, your gut healthy yeah. is because um, there's like a thing in here called like, I, I, oh God, is I it know. another Lion like King a, character? It's like, it might be, but there's like a mom in here living. It's like, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it's where it's, do they brew this stuff? Don't it's, it's the crematorium? <laughs> it's Holy called God. Like the mo- I've heard it called the mom or it's called also like the brain God. and it, and then it ferments. And so what, how do we make beer? You know, it like ferments over yeah. time or, or wine. I don't know if you would actually call wine like fermenting, but yeah, you're sits, fermenting grapes. Yeah. But exactly. in this case, you're fermenting, fermenting your mother. This. Yeah. <laughs> and they call it like a, um, because there's like a big piece where you put in and then it makes all the like little kombuchas. You know what I mean? So they call that like the mom or like the brain. Why am I picturing like <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer in a basement stirring a batch <laughs> of this crap? Really? I don't know. I, I think it was more of like an alien. God. Where it's like the big mom alien. And oh, yeah, like the one that laid alien. all the eggs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, we're yeah. we're like drinking like the mom's alien eggs. Yeah. And when you're drinking it, you go, leave me alone, you <laughs> bitch. <laughs> that, right? Isn't that the famous? That's I don't, the famous I alien line. Okay, so I haven't seen that. You I, haven't seen Alien? I don't like scary movies. I'm like super scared of scary movies. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Whoa. I've seen The Lion King, but not the scary movies. Huh, maybe maybe that could be an alien character. But yeah. what was the other thing you said was in there pre pre probiotics. Pro, see, I, so there That just doesn't sound on a hot summer day after playing tag <laughs> or playing tag. you know or whatever people do <laughs> playing frisbee. Is that what y'all do up here when yeah. you have a lot of land on a mountain? <laughs> we, <laughs> you play you play tag. <coughs> we can't do that down in West Hollywood. I play tag we, with the homeless people. Yeah, you and play. they're the only ones playing. Yeah, and they're I'm chasing. Away. Yeah, <laughs> got it, got yeah. it. But it doesn't sound like a relaxing like pool party or barbecue. Yeah, nice. give me some ribs and uh, a big cold glass of probiotic it is it's so good for you it is yeah 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 it it sounds too medical refreshing um i mean medical like what about like a i don't know what does a beer sound like beer sounds like brick which makes you sound fat sounds like like, brick i guess it's like you get fat or you have to go visit the doctor are you saying like there's too much medical it sounds very like i think you're reading the health aid part yeah just just yeah just we'll cover that yeah, just just think only it. kombucha. But don't you find it weird? Because I got another one over here. I got another. Okay. Look at this kombucha in a can. Is it? And it's strawberry not alcohol. In it. And it, I don't know. It, it's it's it says it's almost better okay. than the other kombucha. Okay. Should we try it? I mean, you can. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I want, want my to, innards. You don't want to try it. I. It sounds like I should be in the emergency ward drinking like liquids out of a, one of those drip bags. Okay, Bill. Okay, this one. Okay, I, I have to. I have to say this one actually does sound a little intense. It, it yeah. literally says billions with a B. <laughs> Bill, billions. Billions of probiotics. I don't know. Yeah. You might be turning me here because yeah. how, how can there be think, billions? It's th- just think one I can. Got, yeah. I think I got. I, I, there's not cold. even billions of bubbles in a Coke. Oh, God. Watch a genie come out or something. Yeah, watch me, like, get all, like, crazy. I take oh, one God. sip, and I'm like, wow! Whoa. And? I like this one. You do? This is nice. Is it better than the other one in the in the cough syrup <clears throat> bottle? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Like, that's such a weird bottle. It looks like the, like think, bug yeah. killer should be in that bottle. This or, bottle? No, I feel like it should be like a X, like the XXX. Yeah. Like the, what do, what do they call that old? Like pirate heavy? juice. Yeah. I feel like you should be floating moonshine. on a boat. <laughs> moonshine, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like moonshine. Like, you should drink, take a sip of that, and then a possum walks across the top of the table. <laughs> no, no, a tumbleweed. A tumbleweed, a tumbleweed <laughs> blows across, and then a possum. Somebody whistles, a cowboy on a horse appears. I mean, that is just a weird bottle. Again, I can't see relaxing in a lawn chair with a, a Vicks VapoRub bottle in my yeah, hand. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. don't know. You're relax. You're relaxing in a lawn chair. What kind of a life do you lead? This sounds like a really pretty relaxed, relaxing life. Pretty you're relaxed playing life. Tag. Mm, playing tag. I love that. Playing frisbee. But but see, this brings me to now. We got this stuff, coconut water. It's just coconut water. I know, but can we just roll back the wagon train a few hundred years Co- I, in a coconut water? For no, coconut water? like like with uh, pineapple. You can't do that two hundred years ago. Well, this that's is, what I'm saying. 
When we were rolling across the prairies, okay. you know, 150 okay. years I ago. I'm not that old. Plastic surgery in LA is incredibly good. Not that old. I can't remember the Donner party, okay? <laughs> <coughs> Shout out Dr. Omar. I'm, I'm 100 some odd years old. He's looking me in my eye as if I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, I remember that. You know, yeah, the wagon trail, <laughs> <laughs> the axle breaking and everyone dying as a result of the measles. Or... I know, but but way back then... It's like, you know, they would travel across the Great Plains. They would. And if they saw some crystal clear water bubbling up out of the ground, yes. they would get down on all fours. That's all they needed. That's all they needed. And now we got coconut water and Lion King water yes. and alien water and, yes. you know, lima bean water from Jamaica and <laughs> wigwam water from Alaska. And, I mean, and you're drinking the shit. You're drinking the brown water that even back in the days of the Oregon Trail, they would have never touched yeah, that even right. if they were near death. Yeah, you're right. This this is pretty gnarly. but <laughs> This is America, baby. Cheers. Cheers. But this, is, this <laughs> has been around for a long time. I feel like... We're going in this direction. <laughs> there was illegal drugs in Coke, wasn't there? There was I think cocaine. there was originally cocaine in Coke. Oh god. But L now it's like what's the next liquid? Like I'm I'm like we're getting so I almost feel like this was the trendy thing. Liquid and heroin. And now if you drink coconut water, you're frowned upon because you're not drinking the Lion King really? water. No, no, not at all. We should go out to, into public and drink it and see if anybody gives a shit. I don't think they will. I, I just wonder what's next, like praying mantis tears in a jar? I will absolutely drink the shit out of some praying mantis you tears. You would? In a jar. Must be in a jar. <laughs> in a jar. Must be in a jar. You will drink, Not out of a can. You will drink the shit out of praying mantis yes. tears. Yes. Honestly, that sounds like magical. Wow. That... On a full moon, baby, with my crystals yeah. surrounding me and all of that. Oh, you have crystals? <laughs> Of course. Doesn't every good girl in LA have crystals? Wait, what do the crystals do? You don't need you don't need vitamin water if you yeah. got crystals. I need the vitamins. I need the crystals. I need like the yoga mat. I need like oh, the Oh wow. So you're yeah. you're doing the full blown Do you have a uh, life coach? Uh I have a therapist. Okay. Yeah. How yeah. often do you see the therapist? Every Wednesday, baby. And I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I came to a point where I thought I was doing real well. Yeah. I hadn't, I'd been traveling for three weeks and I was without my therapist because yeah. I was in different time zones. And I, by the third week, I was feeling real cocky. You know, I'm yeah. like, I don't really need a therapist. I've got this life thing figured out. Yeah. And then I saw my ex-boyfriend at the gym. Oh, and we boy. got a huge fight in the gym. With Screaming. an ex-boyfriend? Yes. What right does he have to fight with you if he's an I'm, ex? I'm telling you. But it's in kind a of gym. my fault. It's my fault because I allowed it. I know. In West Hollywood on Sunset. Oh, the Eagle, Lord. All the beautiful gay men that were in there were like, Whoa. <gasps> what's happening? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was... But so embarrassing. They were probably more appalled that there was a straight couple. <laughs> That's probably what flipped <laughs> them out. Probably, this like, still happens in West Hollywood. Yeah, what the hell are what? they doing Get here? Get the straights out of here. Somebody remove yeah. the straights, please. Clear look at, the straights. Look at Clear how volatile the they are. Somebody oh, get them a kombucha. God, yeah. <laughs> Someone put some poison in that water. Yeah, so. Wait, what was the fight about, though? He said I was actually talking about him too much on podcast. <laughs> So immediately I DM'd Harlan after I'm like, get me on that podcast yeah, okay. immediately. All right. Well, let's talk about your other boyfriend let's not, and not that let's one. Let's not yes. even talk Screw about Screw him. No. He's not worthy of this podcast. That's right. In That's fact, right. we don't want to talk about him That's on this right. podcast. <laughs> He's got to earn his ass onto this podcast. That's right. So I have a therapist in part due to that guy, wow. which we're very grateful for. Yeah. So I have the therapist. Right. And um, I told him, I was like, you know, I was getting real cocky. And then I went three weeks without seeing you. And I yeah. it was happened on a Tuesday, Wednesday morning. I call it Wellness Wellness Wednesdays. We've wellness got to, we Wednesday. have to dedicate at least one day to get in your mind right. Because oh. in LA, let me tell you, I can go haywire real fast. Yeah. It's so a Wednesdays weird place. to a weird place real fast. We sat here for 10 minutes and talk shit about kombucha. I think that is pretty much, we can get weird faster. That's pretty here. good. That's right. That's what we're all really good at here. We're in LA. good at. And so I got the, got to the therapist Wednesday morning and I'm like, my, my, um, your importance in my life was renewed because I was getting very cocky. I was thinking I had it all handled. And then I went three weeks without seeing my therapist Straight off the rails, baby. Straight off really? the rails. Really? So we're back. We're re. Um, our love for therapy is reignited. So you recalibrated. I sure did. Yeah. Oh wow! And did the sure the, did. the crystals 
they help. Do they just sit there or do they physically, do you touch them on okay, your body? Do so you, do you like, crystallize yourself? Yes, yes. My Whoa. favorite thing to do, Whoa. especially like when I'm traveling, I have like some travel crystals. Travel crystals? Travel size crystals. Wow. That I or take. moon rocks. I have, yeah, and I have some um, sage that I take. Yeah. Like whenever I get in like a new hotel room, I'm like saging you. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, there's like residual. So that's to, to get away like old uh, bad energy bad and stuff. Energy. Yeah. And or murders you're... and stuff. If you're at a Motel 6, no! you probably want to cleanse the murders no, and the no. throat slashings. Oh. That's, yeah. Yeah. I just take plastic and put it on the sheets. But <laughs> No, you, know. you should take the plastic and put it on yeah, the sheets yeah. before you commit the murder. Oh, okay, smart. okay, okay. You're one step ahead That's of me. Right. Past That's the right. Jeffrey Dahmer That's water. Right. The therapy is working, baby. <laughs> whoa, wah. Wait, so you go into a hotel room yeah. and you light the sage yeah. and you is there a is there a technique to it? Are you like a conductor? Or do you just uh, put it in a thing and let it smolder? You know, that's so good. So you're actually not supposed to put it out. So I'll go to like the four con- four corners of the room wherever yeah. I'm at. And I'll try to, I mean, you don't have to like touch it. There's not like a certain way that I do it. Yeah. But I'll go to the four corners and I'll make sure that the sage kind of gets in. And then you're not supposed to put it out. You're supposed to set it down and let it burn out on its own. But wait a minute. Isn't every hotel room across America fixed with a smoke detector? Yeah, but I mean, like you can open a window. So you've never set off a smoke detector? I have actually in my own apartment. <laughs> They're like banging on there. What are you doing in there? Just getting rid of some murder ghosts. Relax. I'm like, don't worry. We're all going to benefit from this, guys. Yeah. It's, 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 we all are going to get better from now on now that I've got the sage on. Wow. And what does it stink like or smell like? I, shouldn't say. <laughs> I mean, it can be nasty or it can be like, is it nice? You know, I've actually smelled some not so good sage. I, I kind of feel like it might go bad. A little bit. Yeah, it gets stale. Yeah, it gets a little stale. Um, So with that being said, it just, the best way I can describe it is yesterday we walked past, I have my girlfriend and her husband are visiting. Yeah. And so we walked past a store in Venice and it was like a Native American store. Yeah, yeah. And I smelled the sage and I'm like, this it smells like how we were passing like a Native American store. It smells like natural. It smells, um, you know, in a store like that, they have the crystals. They have like the um, like the leather goods and like the moccasins and everything. So yeah, like, you yeah. know, when you go into a natural store, it smells like natural, like the earth. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes it is overwhelming. Have you ever been in one of those stores where they make the homemade soap? Like that's all yeah. they do. And you walk in and you literally feel like you just sucked on a yeah. chlorine tablet. Like at the mall, yeah. Like yeah. your eyes start bleeding and your no- <laughs> the hair in your nose is running down yeah. the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's too you start much. Sneezing. You start sneezing, yeah, you yeah. get shingles. Okay. You grow haven't, psoriasis. I've gotten the shingles. You yet. will. No psoriasis. I'll keep trying. You will. I'll it's come it's back coming and let your you way. Know. It's coming your way. Okay, but not well, if I have the crystals. Well, we'll sage it off. The we'll crystals, sage that yeah, psoriasis sage right off your hairy ass. Straight out the door, yeah. baby. Okay. Can you sage a person? Like, yeah, can, can, you should whoa, sage what, a person. Mm-hmm. You should. You should yeah. I should. You should. Absolutely. I should have brought some sage with me. So I should go out on the street and just walk up to someone and start whispering smoke around them. Yeah. And when and they say, pull their welcome. gun. Oh, oh. You're welcome. You're no welcome. Need to pull a gun. Put that, kindly put that gun back in your pocket, sir. I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. That's I'm making you, you smell like a log cabin before you go for your meeting. Like the, like the Native American store. You're welcome. Wow. Yeah. Diffuses any situation. You just tell them you're welcome, and they're kind of... So oh. you believe that in any room or building you go into, there's there's spirits, there's energy. Not necessarily spirits. There's energy. Even if it's, like, good energy, it's just somebody else's energy. Maybe I just don't want it. And maybe if it's, maybe it's, like, a super masculine energy. So it's, like, it's, that's for them. I don't need that. I'm good. I have my own energy. Have you ever had, had an energy where it was just, like, visceral? Like, you, you started conducting your smog circle yeah. orchestra and it's then, a good uh, just song like on. get out like a like a voice like or a so- get out or the, the, the couch started walking towards you or yeah. the windows started like something oh. weird supernatural let me think about that i don't because that's sometimes you, there's that saying for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction yeah. i feel if, if you start chasing spirits yeah. what if spirit don't play that way homie okay. Okay. and spirit want to back you on up 
player. That's right. Okay. Well, I was on a hike the other day. <laughs> okay. And my girlfriend did get a phone call that the next time she goes to the cemetery, that she needs to tell them to s- don't follow her home. So it's not Wait. my experience. This was, I, I'm a third party experience. So that could have been the spirit saying, back up, homie. Wait, she goes to a, a graveyard. She goes to a graveyard. And spirits follow her home? Potentially. Yeah. Okay, screw the sage. they don't know they're dead, I guess. At that point, I'm burning a three-hour fire log yeah. from Ralph's. Yes. Duraflame, baby. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm cranking up two of them, so That's I get right. six hours. That's right. I'm. You know what? That's a great idea. I don't need a Hollywood ghost. I know. I don't. I know. Can you imagine they come in the house, they're like, eh, what kind of coffee is this? Yeah. I need... <laughs> It's just like a very pretentious ghost, too. You're, you're yeah. just like feeling bad about yourself. Yeah. Like, I don't need John Wayne's, yeah. what are we watching on Netflix yeah. tonight, partner? Yeah, yeah. You're like, is this not good enough for you, John? I'm sorry. Do you want the remote? You're like being bullied by the ghost. You're like, this is wow. not what I came for. I just want a little excitement. <laughs> but the crystal thing, though, and you're right. A lot of people, for those of you at home that are watching and that don't, don't speak don't, LA, that don't speak LA, a lot of people are into crystals. And just so we're perfectly clear, we're talking about actual crystals yeah. cut from rocks and pulled from caves and yeah. pulled out of dragon's assholes or yes. wherever they get crystals. Yes, yes. And, probably and, in an abusive way. And out of the dragon's assholes. Probably. I mm-hmm. can't. It's like a kidney stone. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. what it, what does the crystal represent to you? What, what does it do? It, I hear they like kind of push off energy as yeah. well. Well, I think even, I was actually just trying to think right there uh, how we even got on the subject. I think because I was going to tell you that um, the amethyst, the amethyst yeah, crystal. Yeah, that's the purple. That's the purple yeah, one. Yeah, beautiful, what, like my you. eyes. Yes, absolutely. Purpley and beautiful and sparkly and so crystally, just like your eyes. Do you and think maybe one day when we're sitting on the edge of a cliff writing poetry <laughs> together, you could turn to me and say, I love you, amethyst eyes? Yeah, I could do that. Mm-hmm. Does it have to be on the edge of a cliff, though? Well, you'll probably want to push me (laughs) right after. Yeah, I'm like, that doesn't sound... I mean, I feel like in that moment, I wouldn't have any other choice. Yeah, and you you don't seem like the relationship type. It's like I told him I loved him, and now I'm done. Goodbye. Wait, what? Why do I not see that? I don't know. That's what your boyfriend at the gym told me. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm kidding. When it comes to him, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, We're not allowed to talk to him here. We are not Not talking about him. (laughs) For, sh- we for are sure not we're not talking him- about my ex-boyfriend no. who came unhinged at the gym yeah. while we his girlfriend we're was We're not upstairs. triggering another fight. Nope. We're not even mentioning Dan. Nope. <laughs> Name is definitely not Dan. Peter. Now, go back to the crystals. So what, what do they do? Like in your mind, you've got them in your bedroom or wherever. Uh-huh. And what, what are you feeling? What's coming off of them? That- well, they represent different things. So... <coughs> Sorry, I need some more kombucha. Child. Yeah, I, have I'm, some more uh, Dahmer soup over there. <coughs> you got me excited talking talking about crystals. Finally. Um, <laughs> um, I just, you know, like any woman, I need, you know, you just got to, takes time. So yeah. that being said, um, now that I'm warmed up, um, so crystals represent different things, different crystals. Amethyst represents, it's like the sobriety stone. Okay. Kings and queens back in the day. That's what I have on my neck. Wait, I this is it. an amethyst yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have, this is the AA symbol because I'm a very active member of AA. Okay. I love AA. Three okay. years sober now. Good for you. And Congra- thank you. Con- we want to take time to acknowledge and congratulate. That's a huge accomplishment. <laughs> That's right. Another element of this town that is tough. Yeah. And strong people make it through. And good for you. Thanks. I didn't even know that. You didn't really? I didn't. Yeah. Oh. Just so people I know. I was drunk right now. <laughs> CJ and I met like about a month ago. And we just had this kind of really fun energy. We met at a comedy club. I was going on stage. She was sitting there in the VIP booth. You were there with another comedian. I was there with my boss, Max. Max. He produces my podcast. Yeah. Yes. And we're gonna, by the way, we're going to plug your podcast later. Hey, yeah. And and we just said, let's do the podcast together. And I, I really, I didn't look you up. I don't know anything. I just thought, you're a fun Oh, energetic good. person. Thank you. And so here we are. Here we are. We made it. We made it. Look at that for us. Two LA people that yeah. said they were going to do something and, and actually they did, it. did it. And she was on time, by the <laughs> way, which rarely happens in, in LA. Yeah. 
no traffic. That's a big thing since I got sober. I try to be more respectful of people's time. I try to be more respectful of my time. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. We all try our best. Yeah, we try. Yeah. Okay, so back to the the amethyst, the crystal. So what what are you feeling from it? Is there a palatable energy that you you uh, you can feel? You almost walk through it. Well, okay. So, I guess the best way to put it is, um, you know how you get you're supposed to get eight hours of sleep. Eight, eight hours of sleep is ideal. I wish you can't always. Yeah, relatable. Um, but but probably when you get a little bit more sleep, you feel a little bit better. You feel a little bit more charged, but you can yeah. function without the eight hours, four or five or six or whatever. Yeah. And so I feel like the crystal is just kind of like that extra hour of sleep. We don't really know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how much it helps us. Like there's no real, yeah. real way to track that. But I feel better when I have them wow. around. Yeah, yeah. Or when I see a crystal um, and it kind of, you know, it might like, come out at me, jump out at me, speak to me. You know, that's a real good way of putting it yeah. speak to me. Um, and so one thing that I really enjoy about this necklace, I had about 15 of my closest girlfriends, 15 of my closest girlfriends. See, there's good people here in LA, y'all. Wow. Um, get get this. And they had this special made for me on my, it was like my one or two year anniversary. And Amethyst is the, so purple back in the day, you know, with the tumbleweeds and the uh, Donner party. And yeah, the, yeah. And maybe even further back, further back. Queens, yeah. purple was the royal color. Right, And then so the amethyst became um, protection for the kings and queens. They would make like wine goblets out of it. Yeah. And then they thought that that would protect them from getting drunk. So this is actually the stone of sobriety. Oh, And so wow. that's kind of just like one crystal, really. You know, there's thought to um, be a lot of different healing properties and crystals. I don't know why I'm talking a lot about Native Americans today. But, That's okay. Um, there's the Native they, Americans. They believed in that too. Yeah, they have a lot of, you know, like with the different herbs and different things. So yeah. this is all something really new for me. I wish I had like a lot more information I could share. This isn't really That's a crystal okay. podcast. So That's all right. probably not a big deal. But so like rose quartz is good for love. And then like tiger's eye is good for like clarity of the mind. And like, so really? yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see, I didn't realize they all had their own kind of properties. Yeah, yeah, they That's do. That's kind of interesting. How many crystals do you have in your, do you keep them in your bedroom? I keep them on the, um, with, like where they can get sun. So I have some in oh. my bedroom, but I also have sun, some on my patio so they can get like, um, some of them are charged up by the sun. Right, some right. of them are charged by that. the moonlight. Wow. And then sometimes you can also put them um, like in uh, the salt water, like the ocean, yeah. and you can cleanse them. So like if I've yeah. had like a big party and maybe I want to cleanse my crystals, I would take them out into the ocean and have them uh, washed in the salt water and then they would be cleansed. Wow, mystical. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool, right? Now, would this be wrong? And I'm, I'm this isn't like a dirty thing, but if I got a nice big like amethyst crystal uh-huh. about the size of a golf ball and okay. put it in my underpants. Okay. Is that going to do anything for me? Um, like, what, uh, am, what am I getting? What are you getting? You'd have to do that and tell me. So we don't know. There's Nobody's some... jammed a crystal in their fruit of the looms. <laughs> I mean, I thought you were going to say you were going to jam it somewhere else. So Where? <laughs> where, where would he put the crystal? Oh, Wait no. a minute. Thought... Into the cave? Are you talking? <laughs> oh, no. The crystal ain't going in the cave. <laughs> Wow, those I things are jagged. I, did, they I want to feel good, not dead. <laughs> good night, Nelly Frittato. <laughs> Holy corn on the cob. I didn't know you said a crystal in the shape of a. I'm like, oh God, where are we going? Well, I'm just thinking if it's got that energy and it's rubbing up against the the baby maker, maybe yeah. that's a maybe that's a good deal. I bet you that there is a crystal for fertility. Um, so it, women do have these things called yo- yoni eggs, yoni eggs, I think. And they're can sometimes be made of crystal and it's two balls and you put them up inside your vagina. And, but it's just like for vagina strength. So <laughs> why would you, you need, why would you need <laughs> vagina strength? Like you're hanging on the edge of a cliff and your vagina grabs the ledge and pulls you up. I, you, what is going on? Why are you always on cliffs? Why do you live your life on cliffs? I don't well, know. Well, I'm trying to that. think where I'd be in danger always with a vagina. <laughs> okay, so apparently it, it's um, for, I mean, this is just being real, incontinence. So if you like pee a little when you laugh or when you jump, then that can help with strengthen your vag walls. Oh. And also for sex, duh. Sex. Oh. Yeah. But how can you have sex if the thing's in there? You suck it in with your vagina muscles. 
I've never thought about vaginas having muscles. And now it's I'm wondering muscle. if what you were doing at the gym. Kegels. But could a vagina lip like slap someone? Not like, like a, a like a like a flipper on a on uh, a seal? Well, like if someone got fresh at the movie theater, someone behind you was talking, could you turn around and slap them? Shut up, I'm watching the movie with a vagina lip. I think that would be a wonderful use for a vagina lip. Like a flipper. Yes, absolutely. And you could swim with them? Uh, kind of like a stingray? Like, yeah. Could they flap? I think that's I think that's a wonderful idea. I've not seen it. Well, then maybe keep jamming the kugels. Yeah. Is that what they're called? No, I think the, the kegels. I think they'll kegels. come up. I think it strengthens them. So if they were long, now maybe it sucks them up. So you wouldn't be able to do that. Wow. Mm -hmm. I believe that's scientifically proven, everyone. Write that down. You do enough exercises and you could have a stingray flapper. No, that's the opposite. You start out with a flapper, you exercise. Oh. Scientifically proven. Wow. Well, that's the marvel of crystals. I want to go back a <laughs> I want to go back a second to the uh, praying mantises though. Okay. okay. Because I'm assuming, you, you're, you're a kind person, but I'm assuming every now and then you have to kill a bug. No. Like if there's a bug in your house, like a cockroach. I or try a, not to. But there's you a, have. I don't live in a place that has cockroaches. But you have, right? I haven't in, in my lifetime. I have killed a bug, yes. Because I'm thinking of all the bugs people want to kill, the concept of a bug that preys you got to let that one live. Yes. Like if I see a praying mantis in the house and he's eating an English muffin or he's sitting on my toothbrush or something, mm -hmm. and my first reaction is, not my house, you googly-eyed freak. That's and, your first? And then all of a sudden he's there, our father who yeah. art in heaven, yeah. hallowed be thy name. But if you kill him, he goes to heaven, so you win either way. Well, that's true. Yeah. You just put a really nice spin on it. You're welcome. So if I smash that praying bastard, that's right. He's going straight to the Lord. One way ticket <laughs> to the Lord. Oh, take a crystal with you, buddy. Here you so go. So now, now I feel like a praying mantis is the only insect I feel okay squishing. Absolutely, squish them fast. Our Father who art in heaven, how, boom! Right, right up. You're welcome. If you say you're welcome after a lot of different things, you'll get away with it. Are you serial? So, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we talked about this water. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of this stuff is aimed at health. Yes. yes. And I don't know. This is another L.A. thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it because I am so over this. Do you have a friend or has this happened to you where you, you sustain an injury? <laughs> like maybe one of your friends like... Blows their back out, or yes. they have a tick in their neck, or yes. they 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 blow out their ACLU or whatever it's yes. called. Yes. And they go, "Oh my God, I'm going in for surgery next week, okay. and I got the best doctor. I mean, this guy works on the L.A. Rams, okay. and this guy worked on uh, on uh, you know uh, Mike Tyson, and uh -huh. you, you ever hear these stories? I always hear these people. Somehow they get the the most incredible doctor on planet Earth." And then they go in, and four weeks later, it's like, yeah, it's not. Uh, so so now I got this new guy. Mm. He works for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he's the best sports doc of you. Have you run into this phenomenon here? I, haven't, I don't run into people that, like, involuntarily go to the doctors. I only know people that voluntarily go to the plastic surgeon and voluntarily get surgeries. Ooh. Yeah. Is that, is that like, weird? No. It's the best way to do it. It's I, weird when you involuntarily hurt yourself and you have to go see a doctor. I want to go see a doctor for fun. You do? Because I'm getting like new boobs or like you are? ass injections. or Oh, you are? A, you a are or you lift. have? I have. Yeah. So going to the doctor should be fun. How can going to a doctor where they're opening up your body and injecting you and that that's fun? Yeah. Yeah. So fun. Have you ever done it? No. You got to do it. What do I need? Maybe you could get some Botox or something. Really? Yeah, just a little. For where do I wear? Everybody has crow's eyes. So that's like the simplest. But see, what, what I find the crow's eyes, mm -hmm. 
or weathered skin, and this is more of a guy thing probably. Yeah, you guys are more fortunate. I feel you. like it tells a story. Okay. Like when I see a guy with like like wrinkles on his eyes and he's he's kind of got that sandblasted, windblown face, mm-hmm. I'm like, there's a guy that's been out wrestling musk ox. Yeah. Or there's a guy that, tra- you know, traipsed across the tundra up yeah. in the Northwest Territories. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I feel like... On the Oregon Trail. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like that's... Yeah, but Tells notice, a story. Notice. Yeah. You're only saying this about men. Yeah, th- I am. Yeah. I am. Exactly. You don't give a shit. Some lady walks up. She's got a shit ton of crow's feet. Yeah. You're like, what's your story, ma'am? You're just like, yeah. pass on to the next. Where's yeah. your daughter at? You're right. And I it's, am. I know. It's not It's not the nicest thing. But yeah, I, th- I think- It's real. We, we want women to be softer and smoother. Yeah. But, but for me, like when I see an old weathered guy, I look at yeah. that guy and go, that guy's- Respect. That guy's got a story. Like the, the Clint Eastwood wrinkles, you know? Yeah. It's just like- I just finished wrestling an alligator down in the Amazon. Yeah. And now I'm going to Applebee's for wing night. Yeah. And that makes sense. And it's like two for one beers. You're like, it makes sense that he has a million wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, right would you. you mind, like, while I do the, 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 the Clint Eastwood eyes, would you mind, like, maybe just rifling off some Applebee's specials or something? Um, I worked at Applebee's for, like, a week. I don't really remember. You could just do um, Artichoke dip. Uh, never ending salsa. Um, yeah. my name is Mary. Yeah. How can I take your order? Mr. Clint, I'm such a big fan. Any specials tonight? Oh, uh, yeah. You're so special. I love you because you, your eyes tell a story. But I'm any, so scared. Any salads or? Yeah. Um, our Applebee's special salad? <laughs> I don't know any Applebee's. But see how beautiful, like, just even yeah. order a salad. It's like to have those crunchy, crackly eyes. Yeah. But your eyes, like, you're, like, smooth and soft yeah. and beautiful. Botox to perfection, baby. This is not Did my you face. do it? Have you done Botox? Yeah, so much. So much. Mm-hmm. But are you Talking worried? I can. Are you worried because it's, like, it's bacteria, right? It, it's isn't poison. Isn't it, like, botulism or something? Yeah, I'm fine. And it, that, that that element does it. But then again, you are drinking, like, mango water or whatever. They it. don't inject it in your eye. You're fine. It's your dermis. Like, yeah. You're good. Yeah. But it could never, like, like leak into your blood system and, and contaminate, like... I mean, it probably could. Haven't you ever done any, like, cocaine or anything? Like, if I... No. I I've done, you've never done drugs? Okay, well, I've done no. a lot. My body is fine. I'm going to be okay with a little Botox. You've yeah. done a lot of cocaine? Yeah, yeah. You still love cocaine and drinking. Really? Yeah. Now it's crystals and kombucha, baby. Good <laughs> for Botox. you. Good for you. That's yeah. probably not an easy thing to just shut off. Um, You know, my program, going to the meetings and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always really good to see somebody who's like just come off like a month-long bender, and they're like, I hate myself. Yeah. I wish I never did this. And you're like, oh. Thank God. I needed to hear this today. Thank God. I'll just go do Botox now and do that to my body instead of the cocaine and alcohol. But the Botox thing, do you have to chase it? Like, is it like every three months it starts to dial down? About every four months you have to do it. You do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so and like that's in perpetuity? Like till you're 90, you're going to have to- get a facelift. Like I want to get like a mini facelift. You do? Yeah, I do. I don't know that I'm going to authorize that. That's okay. Yeah, You'll I have to get in line with the people that don't authorize all my surgeries. <laughs> all of a fresh cob salad, a Botoxed forehead, and give me a mini facelift on the side. Sprinkle it with crystals, you son of a bitch. Right? Right? How wild is that? I just told a story. I love it. I love it. Was that like Gran, Gran Torino or? Yeah, Gran yeah. Torino. It's like an Asian waitress. It's like Appleby Torino. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, Perfect. Well, I really love that for us. Uh, you love that for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're doing all this Botox. You're doing these things to, you know, to enhance and, and build on the beauty you to already maintain. have. But on that note, I got to ask you, being a beautiful woman, uh, what is the toughest part of being a whim, a woman today like just it, is it the workforce is it dating is it what would you say is the toughest part um, of being a woman today in today's weird tech world and i actually think that right now is a really good time to be a woman okay because we're kind of like 
wild and out a little bit. Like as a woman right now, um, we can kind of like, we're not really under the microscope. Y'all are. Yeah. White men. He- what is it? The hetero <laughs> cis cisgendered white male, you know, like you guys are kind of the one that have it hard. Right Say now. that again. I'm going to do the <laughs> <I know. laughs> eyes. Say it again. Hetero cisgendered white male. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Let me make your bed. <laughs> no, you've already made your bed. Now you have to lie in it. <laughs> you've been <laughs> right now you're kind of really yeah. your your gender your situation that but, you have going But here. let me let me take what you just said and extrapolate on it if that's even a word. Yeah, I don't know if it is. Um it's probably not, but it sounded you're really a good. Heterosis white male so you can see right. that. Right. So how is that affecting <laughs> women and and the way men approach women or the way men interact is it hurting you in the dating world is it making men more standoffish is it making like i think like- i think it um you know here's the thing that i think everyone can relate with no matter where you're at dating is kind of tough dating is tough especially as you get older hopefully with time you'll have um, your standards change hopefully with time you'll have a little bit better standards or you'll have kind of more things that you'll um, that you're looking for and different things that you're not looking for. Um, so yeah, d- dating is tough, but I think right now, um, I think it is a bit tougher to be a guy in dating because there is that huge thing of like, I'm an independent woman. I make my own money. I can do everything for myself. So, um, you know, even a guy going to pull out your chair, you know, he might think twice about that or, oh, I don't want to offend her because she, somebody could come back and say, well, you don't think I can pull out my own chair? What's wrong with you? I can do it. You know, I'm, and nothing's yeah. wrong with me. And it's like, oh, I was it's just like being a gentleman. It's and so funny. The comedian me, when you said the guy pull out the chair, yeah. I pictured you going to sit down and the guy going, gotcha, and pulled yeah. the chair out and you Fuck just that fell. that guy. Yeah, oh my screw God. that guy. I think that probably happened to me at some point. Yeah. Yeah, but like, <laughs> that that was the comedian. You, No, that was just a regular guy. In you. That was right. <laughs> <laughs> do it regardless. Listen, don't try that if we're on a cliff, okay? I will get my vagina lips out and I will smack you, <laughs> silence you all the way down to the end, <laughs> to your death. Not even a scream. <laughs> wow, that was sloppy. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so I dating is hard no matter if you're a man or a woman. Yeah. I think working... <laughs> Working is kind of tough, no matter if you're a man or a woman. Um, things, there's so much ex- expected from us. Even as creators, you know, you're doing your uh, comedy, you have a podcast, yeah. you probably are doing some movies or some skits or whatever and what yeah. have you. And you're kind of, if I think it's probably safe to say, that you probably still wake up every morning and you're like, how can I, you know, continue to maintain my relevancy? What more can I do? How can I do more? I don't think we ever wake up, especially in LA, and say, wow. I feel so accomplished today. I might just take the day off. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So I think um, it's tough for both men and women in that way. I'm very much single. I'm currently dating. I yeah. speak really openly about this. I'm on oh, seeking good. arrangements. I'm looking for... You're on what arrangement? Seeking arrangements. What's that? <laughs> it's <laughs> No! How do you not know what any of this stuff I didn't is? even know what kombucha was. <laughs> I thought it was a Lion King. <laughs> seeking arrangements to right. me sounds like a campground. <laughs> Uh, what a campground okay so seeking arrangements so seeking arrangements yeah. is to cut to the chase it's on a site where you would presumably look for a sugar daddy a sugar daddy yes. being a guy who an older man typically with money money to burn if you will yeah so that's where i do my dating because <laughs> really yeah <laughs> A little bit of gray in his hair, maybe an open shirt, <laughs> likes to eat at Applebee's. Is that what we're talking about here? You've got a lady doing the jet skiing or the, what is it? The So you're oh, very yeah, much, water skiing, yeah. very much for equal rights. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. boat out, yeah. you drive, she does the skiing, yeah. she drives, you do the skiing. She hits the manatee, yeah. not me. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, Wait. so seeking arrangements, I yeah. got it. And has that worked? Like, it, yeah. does, does that lead to a fulfilling real relationship or is it just a, a barter system where everyone kind of knows their role? I provide you with female 
companionship, mm-hmm. which could be just talking or physical yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And you, in turn, provide me with gifts or Fina- financial stability. Monetary. I think, like, the way that I'm using it, sometimes, like, so- sometimes it, I'll get, like, picked up in the headlines for, you know, it's kind of saying these outrageous things. And, um, but really, the way that I use it is there's, a, unfortunately, there's so many kind of, like, Posers in LA, people that yeah. kind of claim that they have it together. You know, they'll rent a really nice car for the weekend, take you to a couple of nice dinners. Oh, it's all a facade. And you kind of, yeah, and then you start to, it's like every time you see them, it's like something kind of comes out where you're yeah. like, oh my God, <laughs> like, <Yeah>. are you, <laughs> what's, am I even going out with like the person that you actually wow. are? Yeah. So, what I really like about that site is that it, there is, the beautiful thing about social media and the beautiful thing about online dating is you can, the man can say, um, you know, I'm looking for a woman that looks like this because typically I think we can all agree that men are more, um, men are more visual. Yeah. You yeah. see a mm-hmm. woman and you think, wow, she's so hot. I'd like to get with her. And then women, typically we are a little bit more mentally stimulated, typically not always, of course. Um, yeah. and then also what women seek, and this has been ingrained in us for so, so many, you know, caveman times now is stability. And yeah, so, yeah financial stability you don't have to like save me from a tyrannosaurus rex anymore you know what is like the huge things that um what is it like how many marriages end because of financial difficulty so you don't have to um like save me from the tyrannosaurus rex or like you know uh hold me hostage in the cave because when you leave the cave like another caveman is going to come and hit me over the head and drag me off yeah so what is like our kind of like modern day equivalent of that is like making enough money so that I can stay home with my children and raise my kids right. and not have to worry about whether we eat dinner tonight or pay the light bill. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a bit of an extreme example. Yeah. So, but that's the way that I use it. I've had like kind of some bad dating experiences in the past, like many men and women have had. So that's kind of the way that I prefer. I want to stay home with my kids. I want to hopefully homeschool my kids. I want to have my kids in a pool in the middle of my living room. But do you have kids yet or that no, you're talking no. future kids? Yeah. Now with these sites, can you be kind of messing around with a number of men at yeah. the same time? Of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what dating is. That's I feel like that's super important for everybody to know. Yeah, like, that's true. Not necessarily sleeping and having sex with every one of them. I mean some people do, you know, that's fine to each his own. That's not really how I practice things, but I'm absolutely dating multiple people. But what I, I guess what I'm getting at is if, if you've got this arrangement with a sugar daddy or mm-hmm. whatever he's called, mm-hmm. does he feel like because he's shucking out the box, mm-hmm. he has a little bit of ownership? Yeah. And if you go off with another sugar daddy, yeah. does that bend him out of shape? Again, that's like the really beautiful part of something like this is yeah. that hopefully when the two adults come together the man lists kind of like hey this is what i'm looking for the woman either agrees or says you know what i actually for something like that for example the man can say i'm going to give you this amount per month and you're going to be my girlfriend you're going to be my part-time girlfriend really my so girlfriend, it's just it's or, like there's a number and then she can agree i mean typically with most people there's a number you can yeah. you can negotiate a number yeah th- listen wow. mar- marriage is a business like, yeah, marriage yeah. is a business, but this sounds so dating, more like a dating, dating business. If you're dating, if you're dating to marry, that should kind of also, you know, shouldn't you be asking these serious questions before you get married in preparation for? But marriage? are these men dating to get married, or are they dating just so they can pay for? It's both. A sidekick, or it's both. There's really? men that are on there that are looking to get married. Yeah, I've, really? I've went out with people, and they're like, I'm looking for somebody for longevity to potentially turn into marriage and then there are men on on there that i i've gotten messages there's like where are you at right now i'm like this i'm not a prostitute like you can't just order me up yeah i'm still it like i'm still looking for like a girlfriend experience you can't just order me up and say hey i want to get you for an hour but can you get that with this type of arrangement like like if it led to marriage is there always in the back of your head you're like yeah, we got married, but it was kind of like through the payroll type of thing. You know, does it take the romantic edge off of it? I mean, it could if that's how you look at it, or it could put a really beautiful edge on it where you're like, I'm so grateful that I met this person on this site. I yeah. know exactly how to speak her lo- love language. She knows exactly how to speak mine. We had a very upfront conversation, open, honest, yeah. probably sometimes uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. But we had it together and we were able to build from there. I mean, I think what I desire in my partner 
is somebody that wants to take care of me, that would yeah. like for me to be at home, that would like for me to be, you know, making some food when he gets home, that want that takes pride in something like Lasagna. that. Lasagna. Lasagna. Okay, I can do that. Lasagna, got that. But <laughs> give me some lasagna, yeah. woman. Here's three hundred dollars. Oh! That's an expensive lasagna. Wow. I know. Nice. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a super sugar daddy. Okay. <laughs> I'm but a candy yeah, floss daddy that's is what, what I am. <laughs> no, there, some of them, they call them Splenda daddies. Splenda daddies. Splenda daddies if it's like a lesser lesser amount, you know. How about Ross dress for less daddy? How about that? How about dollar store daddy? How about that? <laughs> some, I mean, listen, there's something for everyone on there. What I really, wow. really What's appreciate What's the name of this site? Seeking Arrangements. Seeking? I've never heard of this. How have you never? Do you, I don't know. I'm is, I'm a bit listen, of a hermit. I'm a. I didn't. Know. This is the internet, though. You can look at the site know, from the safety of your home. I didn't know about it. Seeking. Okay. What is it? Seeking. Seeking arrangements. Seeking arrangements. Maybe they'll sponsor us. Just put it right here. Sponsor down below. us and Sambuca or whatever the hell it is. Well, that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I just really like. What I really like ultimately is um, I enjoy the way the internet kind of brings things to the surface. Right. Because if Cuts through all the BS. Yeah. Like if we, let's just say we go on a date. I'm like, sit, you know, I'm if like not, cu- <laughs> this is a date right now. I've already I'm said a- <laughs> we're going to sit on the edge of the cliff. <laughs> okay. But like, you know, when you go on a date with somebody, when you go on the first few dates, they're yeah. on their very best behavior. True, true. You don't really get to see, you know, you only know what they're telling you. Yeah. You don't get to see, you know, do my demons play well with this other person's. Very Ultimately, smart. Yes. if y'all's demons play well together, you can live a very happy, fulfilled life. Yeah. So that's what I appreciate it about. It's not just seeking arrangements, but yeah, yeah. all of this internet dating, you can cut to the chase super fast and say, okay, you know, do we want to continue to go together or are we good where we're at and we're going to go And I'm not ways? disputing that, but does it, in a sense, cut out a little bit of the mystery and the enchantment? Does it, does it, kind of cut out the romance of wooing someone and finding look everybody has good and bad points right. and, and if we if you cut right through it in the first three dates it's like so check 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 are you are you kind of stepping on the romance a little or no um I very much believe that you can still have romance okay um, even though you might maybe like skip a few steps I guess. yeah I mean if you think about it as a man especially if you're spending a lot of money, wouldn't you rather your romance and your time, even especially somebody like Big you, word, your time. time that you can't get back, wouldn't you rather kind of have that assurance that, you know, we had a really frank discussion up front on the first or the second date, and I'm assured now that we're in alignment. So I know that whatever I do with this person moving forward is actually like building a foundation. Right. Rather than like, I hope she likes the flowers. You yeah, know, like, right, right. I guess one of the things I'm hung up on is the concept of negotiating a number. Mm. Like like the idea of, like, let's say you hit it off, you had all the chemistry in right. the world, and even if you, if you had met outside of the dating app, you, right. you would have been, like, connecting. But now you realize you like each other, mm-hmm. and she says, hey, I'm in for three grand a month. Right. And he goes, well, what about two and a half grand a month? And right. you're like, well, I just went up to four a month. Uh, like, <laughs> wow, great negotiation skills this right? pretend woman has. Yeah, But is it, is, it, is it weird that when it comes to that moment, do you, no, do you have sh- to negotiate? It shouldn't be. You want to know why? Because we're adults. And if we're going to have an adult relationship, there will be so many more uncomfortable conversations. If y'all can't get past that, yeah, then it's not going to go very far. God, this is like the new, maybe this isn't the new frontier, but this is new, <laughs> new for me. I don't think I've ever had this conversation with anybody. Okay. Well, it's, now it's, it's on tape so you can play it back. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. <laughs> I've, I, you know, and, 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 and do you think this is sort of, again, an L.A. thing? Or is this something that, are there people in the middle of Oklahoma right now sitting down and go, well, darling, I'll let you ride the John Deere for three grand a month and... <laughs> uh, Daddy wants to roll around in the barn for two grand a week. You know, like, yeah, is, yeah, is, yeah. is that happening there or is this yeah. just L.A.? Yeah, it's happening everywhere. Huh. It's happening everywhere. I think uh, one of the first one of the first times I ever even, like, discovered, like, that my girlfriend was dating a guy and that he was giving her money was when I lived in Sacramento. Wow. Yeah. So. But is, is there ever a moment where, 
and I don't know if this has happened to you where, you know, let's say you've been dating a guy for five months mm -hmm. and the first four months it's la di da, you're loving it. And then in month five, he turns to you and he goes, you know, I don't really think I got my three grand worth last month. Mm -hmm. Like, it, that's what I'm scared of is, it right. could that, has that ever happened? Like where a guy kind of felt like, you know, the first three months I had uh, two orgasms a day with you and uh, I've only had six the whole month. Hey, I'm not getting my money's worth. Not that everything's based on sex, right. but that's just a... No, that's, I mean, once again, that sounds like an uncomfortable conversation that probably needs to be had. Um, I think, honestly, okay, so... What I'm hearing from from you is there's like a lot of hypothetical like fear based situations happening yeah. where <laughs> you got a problem where, with that yeah. <laughs> keep it up and I'm gonna knock you down a grand. Um, so it's like I guess what it, what how I would kind of classify this is in relationships even where you're not paying somebody to you know be your girlfriend yeah um, something like that could still arise. Um, yeah, you're again, right. with the beautiful thing about where you guys kind of had that uncomfortable, maybe that negotiation in the very beginning. Now, in this situation, you might be a little bit more apt to actually bring up that particular um, subject matter to her and say, hey, babe, you know, I was coming this much. Now I'm not. What gives? What's happening? Whereas if you're in a typical relationship, you sweep it under the rug. Yeah. When you go to the, the um, you know, the strip club. You go to the OnlyFans. You see me. Hi, CJ. Take it off. Do something weird. That's cool. I'm down for that. 40 bucks later, you got your vid. But you don't talk about it. And then your relationship right. suffers. So what would happen ideally in that situation is you'd already have that foundation where you're, you know how this person is going to respond. Yeah. You've already had a few com uncomfortable conversations and hopefully you can address it and you can move forward. And ma maybe she says, oh my God, baby, I'm so sorry. I've been doing this X, Y, Z. You're right. My mind's been totally elsewhere. I'm going to make it up to you. And she makes it up to you. Or you say, you know what? Like this isn't working for me. I'm not going to be able to continue. And then she says, Screw you, I'm off. And then you don't have to waste your money anymore. And yeah. then you go and find a different girl that's more than happy to fulfill all your needs. I mean, that's huh. it's just dating 101, really. So would you say that this is a healthier, more productive way to date than traditional dating? For some. Huh. For some. Yeah. There's, some. A, there's a coldness to it, but there's a practicality to it. Mm -hmm. And the key word you said a few minutes ago is time. Yeah. That seems to be the most valuable thing that yeah. people have these days is right. that the time element. Mm -hmm. And I think even what you're um, seeing as cold is really just practical. Yeah, that, that's... Because there's be not necessarily a warmth in like having to figure somebody out like a Rubik's Cube. Like yeah. you don't feel good about that. Yeah. You're constantly like riddled with anxiety you know, I don't know, does she like this? Is she going to like when I do it like this? Yeah. And, um, you know, there's not necessarily like a warm, fuzzy feeling that goes along with it. I think it's just more familiar. Yeah. And it's not familiar when you're having these uncomfortable discussions. So it feels cold. Do you think the man, in, in any of your experiences, can the man become a bit of a dominating person where because in the back of their head they're like, look, I'm paying for this. I want to come home at 9 o'clock tonight. I want you in the school girl outfit or the teacher outfit. And I want us to make love for an hour. And then I want a <laughs> steak dinner. Like, can, can there be any of that where a guy kind of feels like he kind of is owning you a little bit? Well, I'll tell you one thing. In my experience, even when somebody isn't paying, yeah. paying me to be their girlfriend or however yeah. you want to describe the seeking arrangements thing, I've still experienced that with yeah. people that aren't. Doing That's true. That's so true. So I think that has more to do with somebody's personality. What I've experienced is that when somebody gives to me and takes care of me, they're uh, they're very fulfilled by that. So then they don't mm. kind of feel the need to um, to like ante up like I need to get my money's worth or whatever. You yeah. Know? Because if you think about it, if you when when you do things in a relationship that you wouldn't normally do outside of a relationship, you normally do them because they feel good. So you're still getting something out of it. Right. You know? And are you doing it now? Can I ask? You don't have to answer, but are you... Are you? Am I doing it now? Am I dating on seeking arrangements? Yeah. As I, like, yeah. have you got a guy in your life now that, that is um, paying I am, you to... I am... Oh, do I have a sugar daddy? No. Yeah. No. 
But you're Chad. seeking but one. I am actively, I am actively looking. Yes. And what's what's the what's the ultimate good age range for you? What's what's a nice number? Okay, so I would not. I will like. I just had a horrible experience with a guy that was like 41. So is that too young or too old? Definitely wasn't the guy that I saw at the gym. Definitely wasn't that guy. Yeah, um, we don't talk about we Gary. Don't, we don't talk about that we guy. Talk we don't talk about, about Gary. Gary. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, so I. I'm hoping that if I'm dating like 45 to 65, okay. like that would be, cause I'm 36, I'm going to be 37 yeah. in August. So, um, you know, I want to have kids though. So yep. when the 65, that's, I don't know, like yeah. 65 is a little older to have kids, but also yeah. if you're somebody, maybe you're somebody that works a lot and you can afford a nanny, then maybe 65 isn't that bad or you're in really good health. So, I mean, yeah. it's just kind of, Depends. But okay. Yeah. Depends. Depends. Diapers depends at 65. Diapers. That's right. Going to work. Don't get up from your desk. Woo! You have to work all day, 12 hours a day. What about tattoos? Does that come into play? I know it's a bit of... <laughs> like, all what? I ever hear from women is, oh, I got to have a guy with tattoos. What? No. <laughs> you, you're not like that? No, I'd rather not. Oh, I hear so many women are like, oh, I got, he's got to have tattoos. I no. love tattoos. And I'm like, who gives a crap? Yeah, I don't really care. Um... I, I don't really care what they look like. It's personality to me. Really? Mm-hmm. I've Come on, short, there's got to be balding fat? glasses. Yeah, for sure. But wait a minute. Let's say you're being not to knock fat guys, but you're being intimate with a man, uh-huh. and you gotta lift the stomach to get to the pinata. Well, is that I mean, a, is that that's attractive? A little, that's a little much. Yeah, fat like you don't want muffin top fellatio. Fat what? Guy, fat guys eat good pussy. They do? Yeah, they're happy to be there. Mm-hmm. A lot of calories in this right here. <laughs> what? What? Excuse me while I guzzle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I think that's the name of my new self help book Fat Guys Eat Good Pussy. I want to get one just to feel that. What? Like I might go under the knife and get a permanent fat put suit. A, put a get a pussy put on. Oh, and go yeah, get me a fatty. Have, I can um I can give you to the I can give you information to the right. I, w- I want to get I want to get a a VGG and then seduce me a fatty just mm-hmm. to feel him go to town. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then I'll do that for about a month. Okay. And then I'll get the, I'll have him put my thing in the freezer. Right. Right. And then I'll get it slapped back on. Slapped but you got on. my wheels turning. Yeah. I want to feel a fat guy eating me out. There you go. I love that for you. I support your decision. On your knees, citizen. Mm-hmm. There's work to be done. A fat old guy, maybe, with a lot of... Go ahead. Suck my muffin top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I support that. <laughs> you support a good muffin top suck. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you need. All right, on that note, we are going to cut away for a minute here. We're going to catch our breath. We're going to take a look at this week's hand-drawn T-shirts by yours truly. So let's have a look, and we'll be right back with CJ Sugar Daddy Spark (laughs) right after this. Oh, yeah, here we go. Time for another hand-drawn shirt by yours truly. And if you don't know... I draw my own t-shirts. I take Sharpie markers and I draw directly on the t-shirt. And if this shirt's still available, you can own it at harbling.com. So let's go ahead and reveal this week's hand-drawn Harlan t-shirt. Okay, here we are with this week's hand-drawn t-shirts by yours truly. And this First t-shirt's called Close Encounters of the Weed Kind. And this was kind of inspired by the notion that aliens always seem to come and land in our fields and do crop circles. So I thought, what if they landed in a field of marijuana plants and would they have a little parte? And this shirt, by the way, is in a 3X. I've had requests to have a few 3X shirts made so that's the first shirt and then the second one's kind of more of a graphic design it's a rhinoceros i love rhinoceroses and uh 
I thought I'd do this guy with kind of this graphic feel using all these like black lines and kind of making them look really kind of cool and weird. Um, so that's uh, the rhinoceros. And right there is Close Encounters of the Weed Kind. And if these shirts are sold out, if the originals are gone, once you get to the site, hardbling.com, you can always order a print for a fraction of the cost. And so there you go. That's this week's hand-drawn t-shirts by yours truly. All right, we are back. We are back with CJ Sparks. CJ Sparks in the park. We all love CJ Sparks, and I'm doing the sage thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm saging me some sparks. I love it. Do you see the sparks coming off, Sparks? I do. They're so magical. I'm saging your yeah. sweet, hairy Armenian ass. Are you Armenian? Thank you. I'm not Armenian, but that's Well, okay. this is my podcast, that's so right. now you are. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're in charge. Mm hmm. I'm the sugar daddy. <laughs> um, so, so we're talking about dating and we're talking about all kinds, but there's a new element coming to town okay. and it's called AI. And I, I think it's yeah. going to be pretty soon yeah. when men and women are going to be able to select an automated robotic partner that's yeah. capable of articulating and, and pleasuring and all that stuff. Would you ever entertain living in a place where you would replace a biological human for a full functioning AI robot that could not only physically pleasure you, but could also, you know, uh, uh, stimulate you with conversation and, and intelligence and all that? No. 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 Even if it was like so real, it was sort of freaky. You, you could tell. You, yeah. You'd want the real. I just wouldn't, yeah. I mean, you know, talk about like cold, cold exchange, you know, it's just. Yeah, but what if, like, what if they, I guess where I'm going is what if they made it so real and the artificial intelligence, because they say a lot of artificial intelligence can actually start to learn. Yeah. And it learns from its environment Patterns, and yeah. from people Algorithms. it's with. Yeah. What if it could be so humanistic that you almost couldn't tell. Um, I would really love to have like an AI work for me. I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't want to like spend my, spend like an, 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 a lot of time or like cultivate a relationship. Get emotionally like, yeah. attached. No, that just, I wonder if it's possible. Oh, I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure if we can, I mean like, you know, we get attached to like books, like a Yeah, book, you're book right. Series. I'm still attached to my Teddy Ruxpin. Yeah. I had a big blowout with him last night. He really? caught me playing with my Pillsbury Doughboy doll, and Teddy came and goes, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? I said, he's just a little soft, you know, but... I thought you were saying he caught you jerking off. Oh, God. <laughs> huh. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> too soon. Not only too, too soon, soon, like... Too soon. Way too soon. <laughs> Like before Christ, too soon. Okay, <laughs> too soon BC over here. Okay, <laughs> like before Lord Savior, Holy Lamb of the Host was even born. Okay, too soon. We can only talk about flapping vagina lips. No jerking off. Okay, sorry, didn't know it was a kid show. <laughs> <laughs> a kid show with Thank hi, God. I'm Flappy the Stingray. <laughs> hi, kids. You want to go for a ride into the pink ocean? <laughs> No, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. You know what I just found out today? Oh, what? My trainer told me, so for sure it's facts. We only plant the male uh, plants, and that's why we have allergies, because you know there's female and male plants. Yeah, yeah, of course. We we only plant the male plants, <laughs> and that is why we have allergies. So it what? would make sense. We could only make fun of the female anatomy, but never the all-important penis. Ever. Okay. I'm giving you the authority right now to make fun of the penis. <laughs> Go. <laughs> that would be the patriarchy. They have to give us permission to make fun of the penis. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> when I want to make fun of a penis, I'm going to make fun of a penis. I don't need anyone telling me I can or can. That's right. Damn it. Dag nab it.
Dang nabbit. <laughs> I can't decide. I can't decide if if I I'd, I'd give like like a robotic partner a chance. It would, it, it, there's something exciting about because they're getting so good with this stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Part of me is like I'm attracted to the idea of maybe getting emotional and and locked into it, but I'm also it's like when you get a new cell phone mm -hmm. or you drive a Tesla, you're like, I, I, I'm attracted to the technology. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of fascinating and weird to the touch. And I, yeah. I, I'm stimulated by it, not in a physical or a sensual way. Right. And uh, so I don't know if that would be part of it too. Yeah. But this is the, I think this is the world where the doors are opening and we're going in this yeah. direction. I think, I think if we fast forward 15 years from now and do this podcast, yeah. it's like, we might be sitting here with your robotic partner or, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's pretty wild. Yeah. I mean, that scares me a little bit to be honest, but yeah. I definitely know that like we have the whole web three going and the NFTs and the crypto and all that. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely still learning about that. I'm by no means any type of an expert. I have a girlfriend who's really into it. Um, Did you say the web three? Yeah. What I that see again a new term. I, <laughs> what is Web three? I don't even know about Web two. We're what the do, fuck's Web three? Web two. Web two is what we're on now. Oh, what web happened to Web one? On now, Web one was uh, dial up. There. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like baby Wookies. Yes. Yes. I always, I always felt like I caught Chewbacca in the bathtub, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good likeness. So, so, so that was that, and then Web two, yes. which is what we're doing now. That's what we're doing now. So, uh -huh. what pray tell is Web three? Uh, I don't know exactly how to explain Web three. I just know that um, wow. it is going to be kind of like, from what I understand, it's going to be kind of the elites that are on there to start with. Only certain people that are going to have access. It's going to be like a VIP experience Ooh. for a little while. And then the rest of the world, some of the poor countries or the people that just don't have the access for whatever yeah. reason are going to be still doing the web too while, you know, the, the, the elites. So for sure you'll be there in the web three and um, I will be on the outside. Uh, uh, I'm in, already on the in. web five. That's right, that's Thank right. you very much. <laughs> and, um, and then, so that will be, you know, maybe like a more, I know like the metaverse is going to be on there and like all, I'm really not explaining wow. it very well. Yeah. I should probably just stop, <laughs> but I do know there's like a web three yeah. happening. Yeah. <laughs> wow. See, I'm, I'm, I didn't even know about that. Yeah. I didn't even know we were on web two. We are. We're on web two. <sighs> Remember the good old days when you just sit on your front porch and watch a spider spin a web while you're yeah. drinking a glass of lemonade and go, oh, look at that. There's yeah. web one right there. That's right. That was the very first web oh, right there. Oh, God damned if there's ever a web three. And now here we are. And here we are, yeah. And not in that like long of a time span either. I know. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the, I've, I've heard of this thing, the dark web, where yeah. you can get drugs and I don't yeah. even know what. Kidneys, for sure you can get kidneys. Have you physically, ever, like I wouldn't even know how to get, like what do you type in darkweb.org? Like yeah. how do you even get. Like how do you get there? Like how do you even get there? No. Good. I, maybe we don't want to yeah, know. Maybe we don't want to know. Okay. We've had a very kind of uh, linear <laughs> conversation about things here. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we go off the grid where we don't know what's coming. And what we do is we do words from a wooden shoe. Wow. CJ, how this works is there's just random words in okay. the shoe. Okay. And you reach in and pull one out. Where did you get this shoe? This shoe is from Holland. This is actually a real shoe from Holland. You so put it in your suitcase and you brought it from Holland? No, here's what happened. I was doing, uh, a number of years back, I was, I, was, I, I was doing the David Letterman show. And they usually book you a few months in advance back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I always used to mess with Dave when I'd go on his show. I'd bring, sometimes I'd go out with a purse or I'd, one time I put peanut butter all over my <laughs> boots. Like oh, I always did something to mess mm -hmm. with Dave. And a friend of mine was going to Holland like about a month before I was supposed to do the Letterman show. And I said, will you do me a favor when you're there, 
buy me a size 10 and a half pair <laughs> of authentic wooden Holland clogs. Okay. And she did, and she brought them back. And so when I went on Letterman, I wore this beautiful, like, really expensive, like, purple velvet suit. Ooh. And I came strutting out, and I looked really good. And I had these stupid wooden clogs on okay. my feet. And I crossed my legs, so Dave was sitting here. And so here's me just kind of wiggling my foot. <laughs> and Dave just goes, Harland? <laughs> Here's you have uh, wooden footwear on your feet. <laughs> and that just kind of set it off, yeah, you know, like yeah. it. So that's the story of the uh, wooden shoe. That's such a good friend because that's like a lot of um, expense. That's expensive yeah, real she, estate she, in a suitcase. She was beautiful. My, my friend Laura, and she yeah. was so nice to do it. And so what happens is we have a bunch of words in here. Okay. And when you take it out, it's not word association. Like if it's like dog, you go cat. It's like you look at the word and you think of something in your life that relates to the word or a story or something or okay. a memory. <laughs> oh, God, I'm scared. And uh, it's just random. And the reason I'm doing it is because I don't want you to think, like, let, let's just see what happens. So okay. pull a word from the wooden shoe, okay. CJ. All right. And uh, I'm just looking for a word that speaks. Yeah, let me. it feel yeah. it. Like, you get the crystals going. Yeah. Feel the crystals. And then when you think you have it, okay. read it out loud. Okay. What oh, we? for Christ's sake. Corn on the cob. <laughs> Why? What? <laughs> All right. Is there a story? Is there? <laughs> I mean, there's this, I guess, kind of. Okay, here we go. The corn on the cob story. Um, when I was growing up, I would grow up in a town called Cal California. This is, I have one corn, corn story for See, you. See, that's one the beauty of words from a wooden shoe. <laughs> one special corn story. Yeah. Um, we, it's like a country town, so it's super country. Where is it? It's uh, up in NorCal. Nor Northern right? California, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Northern California. More California lingo. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, it's it's a town in between Sacramento and Stockton, just to give a little context. Um, <laughs> it's a very country little town. Good, I love it. And you were born and raised there? Yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. beautiful. Well, I was born in Sacramento, and then I was, my parents divorced, and then we went to this town called Galt. And we actually went into an even smaller town inside of that town called Harold. And so wow. it was so tiny. We had like, you know, um, there was like a lot of lifted trucks with mud flaps and we go mudding and like a lot of Confederate flags. Oh, cool. And, this um, is California. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Played, Interesting. Played on the railroad tracks. Oh, I love that. We Real had, country girl. Yes. Oh, we had a beautiful. mud volleyball king and queen. Like that. Mud? Yes. Oh, boy. Yeah. We, yeah. we got us a cone on the cob store <laughs> yeah. coming down the pipe I now. Mean, oh, I guarantee we got us a cone on the cob store. Them <laughs> crystals did the right thing yeah. now. <laughs> they opened up a portal. Oh. Um, but so uh, this just makes me think of like when I was very young and yeah. we were – we were drinking. That's how, I mean, you know, that's what you did in these towns that you like didn't have anything to do. It was yeah. like you drink the, you know, the butt ice or you shoot the meth or whatever, how you ever do that. So, so. you probably started drinking at a young age, uh, Yeah, right? I started drinking at a super young age. Like yeah. what? Uh, I think like 12, 13. 12. Yeah. That's a yeah. young and that's yeah. a young and young, <laughs> young drunkie right there. Yeah. And I didn't like it at first. And playing on the railroad yeah, tracks to yeah. boot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not only on the railroad tracks, but jacked out of their heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What's that whistling noise? I don't know. Let's keep playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was, that was, <laughs> ver were you there? <laughs> that was verbatim how that was going. Okay. And so we would throw these parties out on a street in a, like a country street. And we would drink and in the party in the middle of these like two cornfields. So it has to do with oh, cornfields, I, I guess, it. not corn on the cob. But no, that's... the corn was on the cob, yeah. on the stock, in the cornfields. In the fields, yeah. Yes. And so we would like, you know, kids would like go out in the cornfields and have sex. Wait, and, what um, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, we'd get the... <laughs> Wait, what now? Oh. I like that. Um, that's <laughs> Horny words from a wooden shoe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, my friend who picked up this shoe. <laughs> and um, it just reminds me of like this one night when we were partying and I was sitting on like the um, the tail. We were like tailgating when we had, yeah. the, we had the keg and we were all partying. We're like, Woo, you know, and like this big, uh, huge, big, huge, huge, huge tractor trailer thing is coming by. And it's like, I don't know if it was cutting the corn or planting 
the corn or what I don't right. know what was happening. Okay. But it was massive, like a huge. house and the, like a John the Deere. lights. Yeah, like yeah. one of those big ones. Oh yeah. Super the big huge. Harvester. Like a little, yeah. Yes, it was yeah. like a harvester or something. Yeah. And we were like drunk, we're like, woo, screaming. And then all of a sudden we're like, you know, where where's so and so and so and so? And I don't know who it was. It was like some young couple. We're like, ah like we're like calling and looking for them. We're right. all wasted. Right. And, they come out of the cornfields and we're like, wow! And then we're like cheersing. The person driving the, the John Deere situation yeah. was like, what's happening? I think you might have even said, yo, kids better get home. And we were like, fuck it. Get the hell out of my corn, yeah. you fornicating freaks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Take your, you get your cob out of that hole yeah. and put my cob down, you dirty teenage <laughs> hornsters. <laughs> It was it was you driving it. It was me. It was <laughs> me. Yeah, <laughs> old and, gray stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so like that's my wow. on the cob story. I love it. See, that's God what bless. I was hoping because it it brought up all those memories of your childhood. Yeah. And believe it or not, you know, city kids are probably very envious of a story like that because you know, as kind of country hickish as it sounds. Mm-hmm. There's a real romanticism that I think city people have for fields right. and cornfields. There's a mystique about them that just kind of reeks of innocent and that kind of country, beautiful country girl or right. that, that, that cool cowboy or whatever. And, and so just to hear a story that that's where you guys were kind of forced to make your playground and sow your wild mm-hmm. oats, there's, there's a real beauty and an innocence to that yeah and i feel like i gotta share a story because it's it's one of my favorite stories from my childhood regarding a cornfield oh god <laughs> and i'll i'll share it so my dad's a pretty stoic guy mm-hmm. he, he he's he's not a guy that easily laughs but when he does he always laughed at the weirdest things <laughs> like really obscure mm-hmm. like really oddball things like like if a robin dropped an egg out of a nest my dad would just bust a gutter you know what i mean so so we used to have this cottage up in northern ontario i grew up in in toronto and and so we'd have to drive through the country to get up to the cottage it was quite a long drive and we'd go through you know cornfields and strawberry fields and things like that and a lot of these places, when harvest season hit, when we'd be driving home, they'd have signs out, pick your own corn. Mm. Oh, that's so cool. And it was really cool yeah. for city folks that were kind of just passing through. So every year, my dad would pull over, and I had four sisters and my mom, and so there was a big mob of us, and we'd we'd get out and we'd, we'd go into these fields and... <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and we'd pick corn. So one day we got it. The, 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 it was never the same place. And one day we we got to this classic place, giant corn fields. And then at the end of the a dirt road went right up the middle. And at the end of the road was a, a classic farmhouse, you know, with the the porch and everything. And so there's the sign at the end of the road: "Come in, pick your own corn." So we're walking up the this dirt road to get to the house so we can check in. And all of a sudden, from out in the middle of the corn, like, you know how deep those rows yeah. of corn on, they go, mm-hmm. they're like oceans. Yeah. And out in the middle of the corn, all we hear is, hey, Larry. <laughs> like some guy just yelling, hey, Larry. <laughs> and for some reason, my dad lost it. <laughs> like he just, I guess the concept of someone in the middle of corn looking for a guy named Larry. <laughs> and the guy yelled it about four or five times. He's like, hey, Larry. And my dad was just like, and we were just looking at him. Like, we want to get back in the car, yeah. daddy. You're not well. Yeah. You're not well, daddy. Oh, my God. <laughs> and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to climb on out of the cornfield. But before we go... CJ Sparks, please tell everyone who's watching today where they can find you, where they can catch your podcast, anything you want to plug or say oh, to the good folks. Yeah, um, I just want to say uh, thank you to my Inside Only fans, podcast producer Max, Max Amini. I have so much love for him. He was the comedian that I was yes. seeing the night that we he's met. He's great, he's great. He, he's the best. Anyone yeah. I ever meet has nothing but the best things to say about him. Good, yes. And the more time that I spend around him, the more time I understand why. He's such a good guy. Good. And um, I... 
I'm I feel like I'm I really get these opportunities because I have my the podcast, the Inside Only Fans podcast. Um, That's the name we, of your podcast. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Inside so please only. check that out yep. on Instagram. Um, even if you don't know what OnlyFans is, which I'm assuming you don't. Um, I do you? recently sort of found okay. out, but <laughs> okay, but it's, and it's on YouTube as well. Yeah, we, yep. there's little snippets of it on YouTube okay. and stuff. Um, you can listen to the whole thing on Spotify, um, okay. iTunes, Apple, all that good stuff. Um, Great, and it's it's just funny it's like this you know maybe somebody probably nobody will know who i am which is completely fine but maybe something was said that they could relate to or maybe something was said that was completely shocking and they're just like oh my god that was so interesting yeah. shocking but also interesting it's like that good um, good yeah, you're very honest which yeah, is refreshing it's yeah. nice to see you not like you even said your age out loud which to me i, I don't see why people are but you you're just yeah. totally open and i think uh, people will appreciate that yeah. and if that's part of what you're uh, broadcasting i yes. think that's worth tuning into cuz we, we have sure had a good time here yeah. today in the old cornfield yes. right we love a, we love a cornfield yeah but we have um, other only fans performers that come on and a lot of the people okay. do porn but some don't so it's like a full spectrum okay of people okay. and performers and creators that come on um, that we talk it's funny it's it's really similar to this it's funny you get to talk about some relatable topics and some not so relatable yeah. topics at the end of the days everybody wants to feel like they can relate to something but also it's really cool to talk about things that you've never heard of before or you've never got the chance to kind of hear the it's kind of like being backstage, you know, when okay, you have yeah. somebody backstage, we don't know what's going to happen there, but you say, Oh, I'm going to take you backstage. Oh, what are we going to do back? Immediately, you know, there's that intrigue. So that's kind of what the inside only fans is, is like the backstage VIP pass okay, to these different yeah. performers. A lot of people that you see on Instagram, both men and women. So I just want to say thank you to Max yeah, for that. Yeah. And for that was the reason why I got to meet you. So I'm yeah, really grateful for yeah, that. Yeah. And um, I do do the OnlyFans thing. So if you'd like to see me naked, you can find me on OnlyFans. Okay. OnlyFans. <laughs> CJ Only Sparks fans. Yeah. S-P-A-R-X-X fans. Yeah, okay. Just two X's. And if you want to see me naked for free, there's a little... <laughs> piece of roast beef for you before there we go is. that's right um well love thank you for being here thank you and before we go would you mind uh just before we say good night give me a, a hey larry hey hey larry hey larry is that actually what a hey larry is or is that like the guy who screamed it in the cornfield oh yeah. larry hey larry and that's it for today. Thank you for being here on the Harlan Highway Podcast. Check out CJ Sparks. And thank you for being here. And until next time, chicken chow mein, baby. <laughs>